and welcome guys to this second part of the video I try now uh, today to get a little bit closer um, to the explanation of what uh, we intend exactly for a layering technique so let's dive straight in so explanation of what I call the lol L O L technique. No, you need uh, to come down a bit. In this case, it doesn't stand uh, for laughing out loud, but for layer on layer, right? Now, I'm trying to give you a sort of definition of what this low L O L or simply layering, whatever you would call it, um, technique means we need something different here right like a blackboard great the lol technique is a virtual music operation used to overlay duplicate more often uh, with different sampled instruments the same sequence of notes and by the way, these notes uh, may represent uh, a melodic line or instead um, a sort of harmonic pattern, harmonic progression, harmonic sequence. Um, the main goal of this technique is to achieve and define or refine actually a certain timbre or sound and blackboard now i guess um, we can think basically about two different kinds of layers first a sample layer second what i call an arrangement layer let's get a bit closer you may find yourself using a sample layer every time your aim is to change to modify or to work on the actual inner timbre of an instrument for instance uh, let's put it in that way uh, you have just written um, an ostinato part played by let's say the cellos section of a certain sample library um, but you think actually the timbre of those cellos cellos sorry is not exactly uh, the right sound you're looking after so you come up with the low technique right and you literally copy and paste this ostinato part from that instrument that track to another instrument and obviously another track right this actually happens all the times you apply the layering technique this kind of copy and paste operation but if you create a so-called sample layer at least what i call sample layer it means that you are going to work closer on the sound shaping or let's say um, on the sound design aspect of that instrument for different reasons like for instance uh, uh, first reason realism one of, of the most uh, frequent use of layering of the layer technique is to achieve realism so you want to make it sound more realistic meaning if your original instrument is a cello section um, the new one will be another cello section of another library or even a single solo cello but anyway a cello or cellos second uh, sound design i mean you are trying to achieve a different and unique sound so you may want to layer the original cellos with a totally different genre of instrument like i don't know um a synth or a sub pad or whatever but anyway in the end you'll have just one single sound made of two or actually as many as you want indeed 
uh, different samples melted, blend together and mixed together. I don't know uh, if that all that makes sense to you. Hope you guys are getting mm, so far the hang out of it. Because, you know, um, I realize finding a straightforward and simple definition of, the, of this layering technique, um, I don't know, it's easier said than done, actually. But uh, we're almost there, don't panic. So for instance, I've used a sample layering technique in these two sections here. Um, I wanted to create uh, in this part with this LCO um, London Contemporary Orchestra uh, a sort of uh, harmonic single note of violins which sounds like that right so I decided to layer it with the same note played this time by another violence sections of uh, the same, in this case, the same uh, sample library, which is again LCO, which sounds like that. Right? Then I mixed them together and it started to um, sound as a totally new patch, a new sample um, made by those two uh, I've just mentioned above. So these two, which actually as, um, have the same note, a single long note here and here, together sound like that. So just to add some sort of movement, you know, evolving pattern, inner pattern inside this long harmonic note. Um, so that would be considered as a set for me, for my, uh, for my definition. Um, as a sample layer uh, used for a s sort of sound design purpose, right? Now, but I've also used this technique to obtain, let's say, more realism. In this part here, uh, we have this uh, Nucleus um, Celli, Cellos, which sound like that. not quantized at all, but it was fine like that. So this is a um, uh, sort of accompaniment by this uh, kind of cellos uh, region by this nucleus by Odimperia library. So in this case I copied um, this kind of ostinato played by these cellos and pasted it so again, layered, actually, layered it uh, to another cellos track there, this one, uh, from another sample library, which is Odimperia. So it's again Odimperia here, Nucleus, and again Odimperia here, but the name, the, the sample libraries are different. This is uh, um, exactly, Nucleus, and this is called Jaeger. So I just want to give a, a little bit more of a grip, you know, um, to the final sound. So actually I haven't created a new sound like before, but let's say I improved, or at least I tried to, uh, its uh, perception of a more uh, realistic instrument. So together, Oh, actually, I, I just want to let you listen to this single part of Nucleus, okay? And uh, this is the Jaeger. So R, 
two different sounds, but together this one and the nucleus sound like that. Let's move now to the second kind of layer, uh, the one I call um, an arrangement layer. It's pretty easy to understand. You use an arrangement layer every time you apply the layering technique, that is, um, that copy and paste operation, uh, for, let's say, arrangement or orchestration purposes. Actually, like a normal technique of a normal standard composer. So you can have an arrangement layer in two different ways. First, um, layering different instruments together. Second, layering different parts within the same instrument. Like um, you copy a melodic line of a violin's section and you layer it, so you paste it and you duplicate it uh, to the oboe track or with a trumpet or with a voice or whatever this could be. You could even layer a low strings section um, with percussions, for instance, like marcato of cellos and basses layered uh, together with low toms and gran cassa. So that's pretty much what I've done here in these areas, like um, we have here a um, piano, which sound like that. Right? And I copied and pasted this part, for instance, uh, here on the flute. I got rid of the, the chords, actually, obviously. And, or, or here on the, um, on the violin. Or again, here on the vocal, Ctrl S to solo the region, please, the vocal. So, actually, I layered it, I layered this, um, this part of the piano, this melodic line, in, with different, with many, um, other instruments, I think even with the horns here. Yeah. Or you may instead even layer a certain phrase, certain pattern, melodic or harmonic sequence, um, not with different instruments, but within the same instrument. So that's what I've done here uh, in this taiko, percussion taiko uh, track, which so sounds like that. So in the end I decided to um, layer these uh, hit notes here. Uh, with those other one, which have, um, you may already know, the articulation of playing uh, the rims of these instruments, these takers, instead of the full um, center, let's say, of them here. So within the same instrument here, I copied and pasted uh, the same melodic, or in this case, uh, percussive line. So this is a sort of 
inner uh, layering technique. Now, before wrapping this video up, I just want to reassure you about one important thing. Think about that case. Let's say, let's put it this way. Um, you write a melodic line and you want to let it be played by a string section of six violins, right? Now, you want to layer it with another string library of, say, four strings, right? So you may end up asking yourself, but can I do that really? Because, you know, in that way, I'll obtain not a sound of six violins, uh, like it was at the beginning, but one made of six plus four violins. And I'm using two different libraries, so it won't be realistic at all. Ballocks, you definitely may do that. You absolutely can have, um, let's say, a six horns track layered with another six horns track coming from a totally different library, but trust me, you won't obtain 12 horns. You'll never be able to distinguish the exact number of horn players coming out from um, that melting and layering and mixing process. Because, you know, it's a digital and virtual mixing, not a real one. In the world of sample libraries, 2 plus 2 never equals 4. If you are interested, um, watch this, where is here, here, this video I recently, I've recently um, made on this topic and you'll better understand, I think, all that shit. Alright guys, thanks ever so much for putting up with me. Um, pretty long video today, I guess. One of those will be much appreciated for you sticking till the end of it. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell and all that nonsense stuff a true YouTuber should do nowadays. And I'll catch you next time. Take care.